Well, hello everybody out there in Ustream world. My name is Mike Martin. I'm from Casio. I think most of you know me. This is our first ever live Ustream event with the new Privia Pro PX5S. So this is a little bit of an experiment. Um, this event will be recorded and later moved over to YouTube as well. Um, just so you know, I've got a variety of different uh, windows and displays that I'm going to be able to show you during the event. Uh, I do have the chat window up here, so if you have questions, um, you guys are driving this event, and uh, so I, you know, if you have questions or if there's specific things that you want to see about the PX5S, I'll do my best to address those questions. Um, there is a little bit of a delay between the time that I do something and by, you know the time you hear it as it travels over the internet. Uh, but again, I'll do my best to, uh, to demonstrate the capabilities and answer your questions on this uh, remarkable instrument. So, uh, looks like we've got quite a few people here on the chat. So, um, I, I guess I'm just going to begin a little bit with uh, a general tour of the PX5S. I think many of the people we have here on the, uh, the, the group right now are already owners. Uh, but I'm going to just do a little bit of an uh, overview for people that are new to the PX5S that maybe uh, just purchased one. So uh, I'm going to start with, uh, over on the, uh, the right-hand side of the instrument, we have uh, stage settings. And actually that's not the right side. This is the right, right side. So I've got a screenshot of that. Um, on the stage settings are kind of the, uh, the center of the instrument. That's where the instrument um, is designed to operate from. So stage settings are kind of your um, performance ready configurations that uh, you would use on stage. So um, while certain some of the stage settings are currently named things like um, you know concert grand, it's just a, it's a piano piano preset. Um, you can make the name of the stage setting anything you want. Uh, could you can put your song title in there? Um, and then so these are your your performance ready configurations for one sound or up to four sounds at once. So there's one one hundred of these. If you haven't figured out the uh, organization of the stage settings, uh, basically they're set up in in groups so that uh, within ten stage within one bank you're going to experience a little bit of everything the PX5S has to offer. Um, so if it ends in zero, you're going to have a piano sound. So number sound number or stage setting zero zero. One zero, as well as two zero, three zero, four zero. Those are all going to be piano, acoustic piano types of sounds. Some with layers, some without. And as you move through the instrument, if it ends in one, you'll find a sound that is most likely a uh, a tine-based or electric piano kind of sound, uh, like like this one. And all the way through the instrument, if it ends in two, it's going to be some type of uh, reed electric piano. Uh, so that'll you'll find that all the way through the instrument, number 12, number 22, number 32, all the way through. Um, category number three, if it ends in three, it's usually a, a synth sound, often a lead. There's about half of them are lead sounds. Others are just sort of general purpose uh, synth sounds and pads and layers. Category number four, uh, that's where you have the, the clav sounds. Uh, this particular one is the great uh, the wah wah uh, clav that we have. Category number five um, is a little bit of a mixed bag, uh, but primarily you're going to find string sounds, orchestral sounds, a few other uh, layered uh, gigging type sounds. You'll also find some brass sounds in this category. Um, number six is organ sounds. Seven um, is generally speaking, these are hex layers. So it's a sound where you're going to have control using the sliders over on the left um, over all the different components. So with this particular sound, you know, we can adjust all the different layers. And we'll come back to some of those in a moment. Category number eight. Um, usually it is uh, an arpeggiated type of sound. So uh, just a quick one, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah. So there's arpeggiated sounds if it ends in eight. And number nine, generally speaking, uh, is using the phrase. So 
um, again within each of the banks you're going to get a little bit of everything um, all of these sounds I would consider them to be uh, you know templates to get you started to give you ideas to to create your own um, there's certainly going to be some that aren't your favorite and the great thing is using our editor uh, you can replace those you can put in your favorite sounds uh, and and configure those 100 stage settings the way you want now anytime you're in a stage setting the display shows you um, the uh, the name of the stage setting at the top which again you can replace you can put whatever you want there and just below you see the name of the active tone you have going on the zone so if you take a look at the screen here it says uh, that we've got zone one is on it's playing preset zero zero with uh, the grand piano concert so and in regards with the ads guys you know this is this is one of the first times we've we've done this um, so this is a little bit of a trial um, so maybe the next time around we will uh, pay to get rid of those so I apologize for the inconvenience um, but uh, this this is the first time we've we've really done it on this scale so we'll uh, um, we'll keep uh, we'll keep an eye on that and maybe improve that in the in the future so appreciate the comments so back to the stage setting uh, the bottom half of the screen shows the preset you're looking at for the active zone so uh, tone Grand Piano Concert is on Zone 1 and it is on. Just to the left of the display, there are um, plus and minus buttons labeled Zone, Plus and Minus. If you hit the plus button, you can see that I can quickly um, switch to my other four zones. So in the case of this Concert Grand, sta concert grand Stage setting, I can quickly switch to Zone 2 and if I hit both the plus and minus sounds together it will play the string, it, it, it turns on zone 2 so we can quickly enable another zone so within any stage setting you can move back and forth here and quickly create your own stage setting if the sound listed on a particular zone is not what you're looking for well then you can just go to the left side of the instrument and grab a tone from any of the categories All right, so you can grab, uh, you know, grab something from the electric piano category and create a layer um, add the electric piano along with the acoustic piano that I have on zone one just grab one randomly So at any point, you can quickly um, customize this stage setting, select a second tone, and if at any point you want to keep it, well, the right there's a right button over on the right-hand side of the keyboard. Uh, and at this point, uh, just hit the right button. Um, it'll ask if you want to ch save the stage setting. Uh, if you press the Enter button, you have the opportunity to name it and choose a location for it. So just a quick thing while we're on this screen, the top right is the location number, right, which um, actually will default to 00. zero. So um, you should have in mind um, some stage settings that uh, you don't want to keep and uh, uh, choose a location where you might want to store this new layer that you've created. No worries though if you actually uh, were to accidentally delete something that is existing. Um, all of the, the factory stage settings are available for download online um, at casiomusicforums.com. Um, all 100 stage settings are available there. So um, just dial in your location number, use the cursor down key. And I'm using knob 2 by the way. Knob 2 allows me to move through, um, choose any character that I want. Um, dial in I guess I should look at uh, the front panel instead of my camera It'd be a little bit easier so I can put in something here that says uh, Joe's piano or something since Joe's watching so you get the idea um, so use the um, knob 2 as data entry Knob 1 will actually move you around through parameters. 
um, and now you can save this new stage setting, which I'm going to skip at the moment. So that's just a you know a very brief overview of, of stage settings. I uh, showed you how to to turn on a layer. Um, showed you how to do a quick save. So far, no questions from you guys. Like I said at the beginning, what uh, you guys put in the chat window there will determine a little bit of the content. Um, but otherwise, I will keep going with a few um, f some of the common questions that that come up. So another question that comes up often is how to do a split. Um, so first of all, um, the we've already configured a number of, of stage settings that have splits for you. So as, um, as a starting point, go to bank 6. So on the right hand side of the instrument in stage settings, there's a button labeled bank press number six and then everything here in bank six is then one button press away most of which uh, but more than about three quarters of which are splits uh, so we have an uh, electric bass um, and electric piano so if you're looking to make a split well there's there's a great place to get started um, if you want to make some changes to this split I'm going to take you through some quick uh, zone editing here so um, in this stage setting, if I hit the edit button, we're going to go into our zone edits, which is part of this stage setting. We're not editing an individual sound. Um, and now we're going to edit the zone. So for zone one, uh, if I go into the mixer edit view, I can see that I've got uh, the bass sound. If I scroll down, now we can see um, the, the key range for this, uh, for this bass sound. You see, the low it, the low note or low range is set at the lowest um, note possible, and the high note uh, is set at E3, which is um, mm -hmm. the E um, just below middle C. Now, if you'd like to make uh, a change to that, there's a couple different ways to change the split point. Um, you can use the up and down arrow buttons, dial in. Um, uh, your your split point one at a time. Um, you can use knob two again. That's your data entry and dial in um, a split point that way. You can also over on the far right hand side um, that um, above right above the edit button. There's a button labeled num key uh, that has a couple different uses throughout the instrument. But if you press that button one time, then you can just strike a key on the instrument and it will choose. Um, it'll select that key that you want to use for that split point. Now that I've made it a, just a, a one note change here in my uh, range of zone one, I can use again those zone plus and minus buttons to the left of this, the screen and switch to zone two and I can make a change to zone two and move it down to the E flat right mm -hmm. above the D. So there's my electric piano, mm -hmm. below is my bass. So um, that's a, a quick way to make an adjustment to a split. Uh, one, you know, a lot of people have asked that there isn't a dedicated split button on this product because, well, it it's much more flexible than an instrument that just does a sound on the top and a sound on the bottom. There aren't any rules with the four zones. They can overlap. They can velocity switch. In fact, right on the screen here, you can see uh, velocity range low, velocity range high, and uh, you can make those changes. So you could have an instrument that only comes in uh, when you strike the key harder. And there's examples of that um, throughout the instrument. So we've done quick layers. We've done quick uh, split editing. I'm going to take a look at the chat list and see what else we've got. Um, how often will firmware updates be released? Um, you know, this is a, you know, we've actually already done one, um, which is a good point. I'm going to go uh, on the far left of the instrument, press the system settings button, scroll down to where you see information and you'll see that I'm running version 1.10 so there was a firmware update that released uh, shortly after the PX5S uh, started shipping here in the US and uh, there were a number of rather significant feature updates with version 1.10 um, as for future things um, I can't guarantee that there's going to be more updates uh, of course, um, we are always considering um, new things that we could or uh, you know could add to the instrument, um, but uh, nothing is currently in the works that I can speak about. So 
Um, you know, it's always a balancing act between when do we start working on new product and when do we say that this one is complete. Um, I've got my fingers crossed for a few things, and honestly, as soon as um, there's information about an update, uh, if there's going to be one, you'll hear about it on you know Casio Music forums or on the Facebook users group. Uh, we were very uh, pretty vocal about uh, version 1.10 when that came out and uh, when to expect it. So. Uh, uh, version 1.1, if you haven't installed it, there is a tutorial video on uh, YouTube. So if you uh, search for PX5S uh, firmware update, you'll find it a, uh, a great YouTube video that takes you step by step through the process of uh, installing the firmware update. And um, a lot of improvements, um, a few of the big things that happened with the update just to mention quickly with things like um, organ sounds the rotary speaker uh, well it is on the mod wheel it's also on the foot switch so foot switch one um, controls the rotary speaker speed and it's uh, with version 1.10 we added a toggle switch so the pedal um, can function as an on off switch uh, when uh, when used for certain effects such as the rotary speaker um, you could use it uh, a variety of different ways to turn things on and off um, so is there um, I'm going back to the chat window here to take the next question is there a way to adjust zone levels with the knobs or sliders absolutely um, a number of the stage settings are already set up to do this. Um, so again, thinking of these as templates, um, if, if, uh, if you want to operate it that way, absolutely. Um, so for most of the stage settings that have uh, a combination of sounds, such as this one that has uh, piano, it's a piano ballad layer. It actually has three different components. It has an acoustic piano. It has sort of a vocal sound. And it has an electric piano. So in this particular example, I've got three different sounds on three different zones. And my first three sliders over here on the left um, are controlling the, the relative volume of each of those. So there's a lot of examples like that in the machine. Uh, here's another uh, where again the sliders are controlling. In this case slider one is the string. Slider two is the vocal sound. Um, so I've got independent control over all of those. Um, I'll be uploading really soon a, a simple template that gives you four sounds and automatically has uh, four sliders uh, assigned to each of those uh, four instruments. So uh, back to the chat window real quick. That was a great question. Uh, someone's asking, if can I demonstrate some of the other cool 1.10 features like the Polyglide? So um, absolutely, that was another um, big improvement in uh, version 1.10. Uh, I have to go to my favorite uh, synth program on here, uh, which is this cool. Uh, just it's a six-layer hex layer sound, uh, all using different sawtooth waveforms. Which brings up a point that uh, in version 1.0 we added more synth waveforms to get to give you access to some great uh, textured sounds like this. So. Um, We can detune those layers on the fly. We can adjust the filter. And we also have Portamento. So um, it is assigned to pedal two um, throughout the instrument. Uh, when we did the version 1.10 update, you'll find that many of the stage settings do respond to the second pedal. And in this case, the second pedal turns on and off the portamento. So you'll find other sounds where um, 
it, it the pedal automatically does a swell or something like that. So um, yeah, Portamento is one of one of my favorite uh, new features for for creating textured sounds, uh, giving some additional life to um, to the instrument. All right, looking back at the U at the Ustream chat here, um, is the music rest slot hidden under the blue plastic strip? <laughs> Um, I haven't peeled mine off to find out, and uh, I, I wouldn't recommend that you do. But um, you know, there isn't a music rest on the PX5S. Uh, it's been a, a long talked about thing. Um, but no, I'm not going to uh, deface my my PX5S to find out. Um, there probably is, to be honest. But uh, uh, good luck. You could probably buy a new music stand or a music stand for a PX350 from our Casio parts department. As far as the replacing the blue plastic strip, if it isn't there, uh, that might be a longer wait from our parts department. So, um, Back to the Ustream chat. Is there a way to freeze the effect settings as you change tones within a stage setting? Um, so that's a great question. In fact, uh, anytime you... Um, you're playing a stage setting, and you um, you make a change to the effects, such as you know more reverb, or add a delay. Uh, those uh, mixer type settings are part of the stage setting themselves. So if I were to um, go ahead and write this stage setting, I'm just going to replace the one I had and see what happens. I'm going to select a different stage setting and come back. So effect settings are stored. That would include any changes you made to uh, the EQ. If the EQ is assigned up here to knobs, uh, those will also be stored when you ch um, make a change to the stage setting. If it is something else such as a filter, um, so let's go back to that synth sound real quick because it's real easy for us to hear. So if I were to make a change, and I've, I've closed the filter almost all the way, and I hit the right button and, and replace this stage setting, what you're going to find is we did not, uh, we did not make it, we didn't store that change with the filter because we didn't actually edit the sound. We just manipulated that sound in real time. Um, so if you want to, uh, if, if you're moving the sliders and you come up with a, uh, a setting that you like, um, you kind of need to go in and edit that tone and, and recreate that um, those settings um, and then store it. And that way, um, that the uh, the filter changes will be stored along with the stage setting. So, all right, taking a quick look at uh, the Ustream chat. Keep the comments coming. I appreciate it. Ah, so there was a question about USB to keyboard. Um, so, uh, important question here. We have a lot of sounds for download over on um, the Casio Music Forums. There's a great uh, database section there for uh, additional presets, stage settings, tones, those kinds of things. Um, loading them in, uh, there's a couple different ways. Um, I, the first of all, uh, first thing I'd recommend, uh, in fact the easiest way, um, is to use the editor. Um, so if because you've downloaded them to your computer, um, so utilize the editor over on the left hand side of the editor up at the top corner there's a button labeled transfer. Um, so on the left hand side I have got presets that are on my computer. On the right hand side I have presets that are currently the stage settings that are currently in the PX5S. So if I wanted to um, take a stage setting that I've downloaded and, and load it in here, uh, let's say I want to replace number 87 with, uh, well, I'll just grab one this transgate sound. Uh, all I do is drag it over and it's loaded into the instrument. And it asks me, it does confirm if I want to do that. Um, so uh, I've now 
Uh, if you take a look back at the screen on the front panel, it shows that the Transgate sound is now loaded into that location. So the editor is absolutely the easiest way, but of course you can load things in um, from the USB drive. So over on the right hand side, um, there is a USB port. Plug in your USB drive. Press and hold the button labeled media and that will pull up um, your option to, to load things. Um, so I can load a stage setting or I can load individual objects such as tones. So if I were to load a tone, um, there's a couple things that happen. So first of all, uh, if you look at the screen, it's showing me, in this case, uh, an Air 60s piano. So it's probably a Wurlitzer type sound. It's asking me where I'd like to load it. Um, and I can also scroll through and see all the other different instruments or tone presets that I have on here. So there's one, an early version of, uh, I guess, probably a Bloody Well Right preset. Um, I have to use the, the category tone buttons on the l to the left of the display to load those sounds into the proper location. So it requires a little bit of organization on your part. So for example, if I try to load this Air 60s electric piano um, into the string category and I press enter, um, let's see what happens. Wow, it went in there. Didn't expect it to, so I just learned something. Hang on one moment. That was totally unexpected. All right, so I learned something. Any of the user tones can be loaded into any user category, with the exception of a hex layer, and that's actually where I was headed. So if you're loading a hex layer sound, um, you have to have the hex layer section. In fact, you won't actually even see any of the hex layer presets listed as you scroll through unless you have the hex layer category um, selected on the left. Um, I just pressed the drums category and it's telling me that I don't have any drum kits saved on the disc. So, um, well, so uh, pretty cool. We learned something here live that uh, you can load any category of sound except for hex layers into any of the open user tone locations. All right, B back to the Ustream chat. Um, is there a copy and paste function for effects? There is not. Um, you cannot, um, the effects settings themselves, there isn't a way to name them and save them. Um, so unfortunately that's uh, not possible currently. Um, the next question is about the organ draw bar mode, and so uh, I guess I'll, I'll clarify uh, first. The, the PX5S does not have um, a dedicated draw bar simulation mode. Um, you know, one of the things they uh, they did add with the PX5S are some you know some great new um, um, rotary effects. And we can we can use the the wheel. Or we can use the pedal to control the rotary effects. And there's also other controls available, such as uh, overdrive and vibrato chorus. Now, when we were developing the presets, we realized that while well, the hex layer mode um, could be used using the sliders and the multiple layers that hex layer sound has. To, to create a pretty convincing um, draw bar mode, although you can't, um, uh, we only have six sliders, and of course our Hammond organ has nine sliders. So uh, we did do a couple of things when creating these presets that's pretty cool. So um, you'll see on the screen when I move the first slider, and then I'll change my view here. When I move the first slider, it's controlling the le levels of two layers simultaneously. Um, so we're actually representing fold back accurately. Okay, and as you move up to the next layer, so here's a preset. We've uh, we've got multiple. multiple draw bars there to dial in our sound um, and uh, you, know, you can ma 
manipulate those on the fly. So it's pretty cool. Um, the pedal doesn't have to be set up to, to activate the rotating speaker with, again, version 1.10 to answer the question online. Um, all of the stage settings were programmed, all the organ stage settings were programmed to function where the sustain pedal um, does not, in fact, sustain. Um, it's, it functions as the rotating speaker speed switch. And um, so uh, I think uh, that's a, a welcome change in the new presets. Uh, with this particular preset, you can also hear that, uh, you know, we've got uh, vibrato chorus. Also, you'll find, uh, in addition to the, ro the vibrato chorus, you can get a pretty cool, nice overdriven organ sound in there as well. So, um, a lot of variety from just one um, one organ patch on here. Um, we are working on more of these to give you more variety and more, I guess, accuracy to those presets. Um, but uh, this is a great starting point. There's two presets, um, preset stage settings on the PX5S that give you this drawbar control. Um, one is in location 4-6, the other is in location 7-6. Uh, and as the names indicate, um, this first one is actually giving us control over five different drawbars. The other one is giving us four. Uh, and we're doing it that way to accurately represent uh, fold back on the organ sound. So, um, going back to the questions, and again, appreciate the questions coming in um, live here on Ustream. So the question is, um, can you demonstrate the creation of a hex layer from scratch uh, from Piano Man Chuck? Um, always appreciate your videos online, Chuck. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Um, hex layers are one of my um, favorite, favorite uh, uh, aspects of the instrument because that's the the hex layer section of the instrument is really the the synth side of the product where we can really manipulate um, in great detail uh, each of the components that make up the sound um, so in order to um, to make one from scratch um, there are many empty hex layer locations um, if I were to go um, again from my uh, category selection over the left hand side uh, choose hex layer, um, find a uh, one that is numbered and not named, and you'll likely just hear uh, some sine waves. So uh, if we were to edit that sound, uh, just hit the edit button on the right hand side, select tone. Uh, this is where you get into, uh, as it says right on the top of the screen, hex edit. And uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, and um, as the name suggests, a hex layer sound is made up of up to six components. And so each of those components are considered layers. Uh, so if I enter on that screen, we can now see we're looking at layer one. It's turned on and we have a, a basic sine wave selected. There are a ton of waveforms to choose from. Uh, if I spin the wheel all the way to the left all the way, and then all the way back to the right, you'll see that there's 439 different waveform selections available. Uh, almost all the content in the machine, uh, except for drum samples, you really can't get to you know snare sounds and things like that, but uh, just about everything you can imagine is in here. Um, so. Um, I'll grab some of the, the you know, the, the new waveforms. Here's just a basic, you know, basic sawtooth sound that I've, I've turned on layer one. If I want to add another layer to that, um, again, to the left of the display, there's those zone part um, plus and minus buttons that we talked about earlier. You can go to the next zone and turn it on and then dial in another waveform. So, um, you know, again, so much content to choose from. Uh, choose something different, and now I've got uh, a basic stack. All right, so um, so let's just I'm just gonna check something here. So the stage setting I started at already had a few things already lined up, um, including filter control and layer detuning. 
So if you're going to make a hex layer sound, you know, my, my first advice is well to start start with a stage setting that uses one and, and work your way from there. Um, um, and so we can get in here and continue to you know manipulate um, this stage setting a bit. Uh, my envelopes, we have envelopes in the filter section, we have envelopes in the amp section. Um, if I want to make maybe a pad sound, we can go in and you know adjust the attack time. Now if you look at the top of the screen, one thing you'll notice is that hey, I'm, I'm, I'm back looking at layer one. Um, I can switch back and forth easily between layers one and two, and uh, you know I can make them slightly different to maybe give the sound a little uh, more depth or variety. Um, but if I scroll left, you'll see on the screen I'm now editing all the layers simultaneously. So um, if I put in a value of let's say 101, um, and now I go and look at each of the layers, you'll see that I now have a nice slow attack of 101. Uh, which I'm not hearing. Let's turn that up. I'm not hearing it at all, so what am I doing wrong? Just a moment. There we go. Attack time. Aha! So one of the changes I didn't make was reducing the initial level down to zero. And let's turn. There we go. So now I've got a very cool um, fade in on this sound. And then I can go to my release section and add a nice long fade out to all of my layers. So, you know, when you're creating a hex layer sound, it um, it takes a little bit of experimentation. There's everything from um, piano sounds to uh, all your electric piano elements are available in a hex layer. Um, I just uh, wiped out the changes I was just working on. Um, so you can actually get in here and you can see um, all of the individual um, components that make up our piano sound are available. Um, including little attack noises, um, the electric pianos with, again, all kinds of clicks and pops and uh, little idiosyncrasies that those instruments make. So you can, you have access to each of those elements. So if you needed to make something such as a key off sound, um, you have access to that stuff. So hex layers, extremely, um, extremely powerful, um, very deep. Lots of possibilities. Uh, there's things like pitch envelopes and other sound, you know, other elements that uh, you know we're we're just barely exploring in some of the uh, the factory presets so far. So as far as new sounds, that's where uh, most of them are going to come from as we release new sounds for the PX5. Um, they're going to be you know hex layer types of sounds. So. Um, Back to the Ustream chat, is the all edit available for stage settings and zones? Um, it is available in the editor. So um, I'll show you that real quick. Um, go over to the editor screen, which is here. In the top left, um, back to my main um, stage setting edit screen. you'll see a green S square at the top of each of the zones. If I were to uh, press that little button, um, those are select buttons, and you can see that I can make adjustments to multiple zones simultaneously. So that's one great addition um, that the editor gives you when editing stage settings. You can flip through multiple zones. Uh, when you're editing it from the front panel, um, you do have to edit each um, each layer or each zone in independently. Great question, thank you. So taking another look at the chat window, um, does each layer have its individual reverb chorus um, amp settings? Uh, great question. 
So uh, to answer that, let's dive in and take a look. Um, so a stage setting, all of those components are part of, of the mixer. So if we dive in and look at the mixer, we can scroll down. And by the way, I'm going to show you a quick shortcut. Uh, take a look at the top right hand corner of the screen. It says, uh, first of all, it says zone one. Uh, and then it says one slash six. So that means we're looking at page one of six pages of parameters that are available here. So I can use the cursor down button and go through all six pages, just like so. Um, I can also use the right cursor button to switch to the next page and again to the next page. So um, this is a great way um, rather than hitting the down button many times uh, that you can find um, the parameters that you're looking for. Um, also knob one on the top left of the keyboard also scrolls you down through this list of parameters. So there's a variety of ways rather than hitting um, the cursor up and down buttons or the plus and minus button so many times uh, use the knobs, use the shortcuts that are available. So um, here's the mixer section. Um, you'll see that um, the PX5S actually has um, three system effects. Um, there's, a, there's a system chorus, there's a system delay, and a system re reverb. Each zone has the ability um, to go to those effects or not. So there's a delay send, there is a chorus send, and that's completely independent for each zone. Um, in addition to that, each of your four tones, um, or each of your four zones um, within that stage setting also have their own insert effect. And that insert effect can be a delay, a distortion, a rotary speaker, wah, you name it. So, um, so four insert effects and then three system effects. It's a pretty remarkable um, uh, system to be able to uh, really get a, you know, a lot of uh, tonal variety, get different effects on different sounds, um, incredibly flexible. So um, one quick pause for a drink of water while I read uh, the latest chat questions here. Can I demo phrases and is it possible to record a phrase such as a bass line and then play it over with another stage setting? Joe, you're picking the tough questions. Ah. All right, so uh, yes, that's what phrases are for. Um, that's the that's the concept behind them. So um, let's I'm going to back up a little bit and just talk about um, phrases and arpeggios, and we'll work our way up to to actually recording one. Um, so each zone on the PX5S has access to either a phrase or an arpeggio. So um, over on the, the top left of the instrument, there is, um, there's an arpeggio button. It has a little arrow pushing down on it. So if you, if you hold that button down, um, that pulls up the window where you can select an, uh, an arpeggio pattern. Okay. So we have, uh, by default with this particular stage setting, a, a arpeggio labeled skip up. There are 100 different, um, uh, this is one case where data entry doesn't work. Uh, there are 100 different um, arpeggio patterns in here to choose from, some of which are things like bass lines, okay. Okay, so th um, there's, there's some things like that that are already built into the machine. If I cursor up, however, um, I can choose, instead of an arpeggio, I can choose a phrase. And cursor back down to the select section. And here's where you'll find um, a lot of different things as far as phrases. So phrases, um, first of all, it's, it's, it's a short musical riff. Um, so in this case, um, Okay, it's just a major chord. So just pr playing one note gives me that major chord. It could be a chord progression. So this one is just a, sh a short uh, chord progression uh, that will go through as I hold that note down. And the phrases will transpose. Okay. Yeah. You know, to, to any key, it just follows you. Now, um, 
to create your own. There's uh, this is actually one of the areas that uh, admittedly is is a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna do my best to to take you through it. Um, so. Uh, on the front left of the keyboard, I don't have a camera that really covers that that area really well. I've got a screenshot of the front left. Uh, there's a button labeled phrase. So um, if I were to um, press and hold the phrase button, uh, we get a window that looks like this. Phrase record. Okay, so I have the opportunity to uh, record a new phrase or overdub one of the existing ones. Um, we have the opportunity here to um, to do quantizing on input or not. You can choose different note values. And actually by default, um, this the end measure is auto. Um, so that means that um, based on when you stop, it will it will look uh, for the the nearest end measure. Um, you can you can specify, hey, this is going to be an eight measure phrase, you know even if I don't, play anything in the eighth measure. So maybe if you want something that is going to, to loop smoothly, uh, you might want to keep this end measure um, aspect in mind. I see the color of my walls adjusting from my screensaver. Okay, sorry I got distracted there. Um, so um, once you've chosen um, how many measures you'd like to, to do, um, all you need to do uh, is, is, is simply hit the phrase button again. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake here. All right. So I um you actually hit the phrase button two times to get it and record. And now I made a mistake. Um so in the system settings there is a parameter here for phrase recording where you can turn your pre-count on. All right, so that will give me one measure count in um, for my uh, phrase. So now that my phrase is turned on, or my pre-count is turned on, let's try that again. Hit record. Okay, so I've recorded a simple phrase. Um, I guess I had classical phrase number 73 selected the last time I, um, I did this. Um, if I want to save that recording, um, the process works the same. I can go down here and, and name it anything that I want. So I've recorded just a basic, um, you know, baseline kind of thing. So we'll save this. We'll just call it demo. Oops. Demo phrase, I should have left the P in there. So it's demo phrase one. And I'm going to save it to number 100. So if, you know, if I were just hit the start button, you know, we'll, we'll hear that incredible bass line that I just recorded. Um, now, if I want to use this in a stage setting, um, again, my, my arpeggio uh, switch has to be on. And I need to have that f that particular phrase selected, and I keep reaching for um, knob two. Um, I did use the number key button on the far right uh, and typed in phrase one hundred. Okay, so um, now I can choose the range or where I want that original note to be. Um, so if if I choose it as my original note, C3. So now I've got in on one zone of my uh, stage setting, um, I've got a, a bass line that I can use. So of course at this point, um, I could choose a different sound, go to my tone categories, choose uh, you know, some type of electric bass and uh, and now I've just got this looping phrase. So it's a really cool way and unique uh, way to um, add some, especially when your hands are busy, that you could trigger a riff and um, 
and trigger you know a baseline on the fly have it follow you from key to key and uh, um, you know do some things that in a performance situation otherwise wouldn't be possible uh, in the factory stage settings we've done a number of uh, examples where there there are phrases that are used uh, there's a demo of this one on our SoundCloud page you probably heard where we've got um, uh, guitar and bass down here in the left so so that's a phrase um, it's actually a phrase let's see what it's called here uh, it was actually just a slap bass line that when I put a different sound on it, it sounded cool. I uh, added some guitar and now I've got, you know, this cool. Okay. So it's a really cool way. Uh, phrases can be useful for all kinds of sonic elements, uh, be it bass lines, that's most obvious. Uh, there are also examples where phrases are triggering uh, basic drum patterns. Uh, one last quick thing here on uh, phrases is that uh, you don't have to create them on your own using the editor. There is a really cool tool over on the left hand side called Fla Phrase Converter and I don't have any MIDI files currently um, on my computer in the folder um, but this is a utility that lets you choose from a from a standard MIDI file that maybe you've downloaded from the web I could choose the drum track on channel 10 um, and choose particular measures um, and uh, you know which events I want from that MIDI file and convert that into a phrase uh, another cool thing about phrases is that um, a phrase can be things other than um, notes. A phrase could be a series of controller movements. So if I were to put it in phrase record with a synth sound, move the knobs a whole bunch of times, it will record all of that and, um, and then allow me when I press a key it will duplicate all of that. So, alright. So, uh, that's a little bit about the, the phrase sequencer. Um, We'll get into that in more detail in dedicated um, events, but uh, let me see if uh, see some of the other questions here on the Ustream chat list. Again, appreciate uh, the participation here. Um, ah, Steve LeBlanc is using phrases, and that's good to know. There we go. Um, yes, this video will be on YouTube later, so if you guys can't stick around for the entire thing, uh, later you'll go be able to go back and, and watch elements of this uh, one at a time and, uh, and uh, rewind and watch parts again. Uh, so there's a question about Setlist Maker. Uh, we got a lot of attention with that at, at NAMM. When we introduced the PX5S, it is a, um, uh, an iPad application that allows you to send MIDI, MIDI you know, program changes and events over to the PX5S uh, to select, and we used it to select stage settings live. So it's a great way to see a list of, of all the stage settings um, or song titles. It's really what it's designed for. You put your song titles, your chord changes and things like that in there, um, and you can um, select them from a list. So. Um, as far as the operation of it, uh, I'm not going to get into the operation of the iPad application. It isn't a Casio product. Um, I will probably address that in um, you know a future. I actually don't even have my iPad here with me at the moment, so um, maybe we'll address that in a future video. It's a great application, and it adds a ton of functionality to the PX5S as far as uh, being able to see all of the contents on a list and quickly navigate through all of those. So uh, we'll get that hooked up and use the setlist maker in a in a future video. So do appreciate uh, the question, Greg. We will address that uh, in a future video. All right. So uh, taking a quick look, and I'm going to. Uh, 
take another look at the questions. So I don't see anything, any questions at the moment. Some of you guys just commenting about different things. Um, I'm going to take a moment and just demonstrate some of the other elements of uh, the stage settings that maybe you're not aware of. Uh, one thing I would recommend when you, uh, when you get a PX5S, if you have an opportunity to try one, if you haven't tried one yet, um, is you know go through those stage settings on the right hand side of the instrument and you know first of all you know use use those sliders use those knobs and um, see what happens and you know one of the things that's really amazing about the PX5S is how much variety you can get out of a a single sound so um, as an example So we've got a basic uh, reed electric piano here. Um, the slider over on the left, um, as the you know, and anytime you move a slider, the screen shows you what's actually happening. Uh, in this case, slider one. If I move that slider up, it is simultaneously increasing the gain while reducing the level of the instrument. So, So I can get something that you know gets a little bit of a crunch without the level getting um, overwhelming. So the next slider on the list is actually going through the different speaker simulators or amp simulators that are available in the DSP section. So uh, if I were to go back and, and bypass it all together, we can hear we've got a you know a nice uh, rich clean Wurlitzer type sound, but then I can get in and adjust different um, speaker and amplifier combinations. So that's an example of one labeled, you know, M stack. Um, you can just guess what that means. So a lot of variety within each With each of these, so um, do use the do, do use those sliders and knobs. In this particular preset, um, you'll find some that that do have key off noises assigned to a slider. So uh, if you take a look at the screen, it says key up read three or key key up read S three. So what we're saying is use this slider labeled S three slider three. Um, and that'll control how much of the, the key off no noise that you're hearing with this Reed electric piano. Um, there's a, a time-based electric piano right next to it that has the same the same kind of idea. Okay, so a lot of variety with each of these stage settings from speaker simulators to the key off noises um, and other tone and EQ control. You can really manipulate um, uh, the uh, stage settings quite a bit. Uh, so great question coming up here on the Ustream chat is, what is the, where's the best place to set the master level of a stage setting? Um, uh, you've been using the compressor output level, but you're not sure that's the best approach. So great, great question. Thanks for asking. So. Um, so there are two, mas two master effects on the PX5S. Uh, one is the, the master EQ, one is the master compressor. Uh, these are um, two effects that are on the, the, the final output stage of the PX5S. So if we were to take, a, if we were to just press the master button here on the left, uh, we can see both of these. There's a compressor and there is an EQ. So um, by default, uh, on the PX5S, the compressor is actually, um, it's not active for any stage setting. It's not active unless you make a physical change to that. Um, so don't worry about there being compression um, by default. It, there, it's, it's actually bypassed. Um, however, um, the compressor is, current, is by default set to be global throughout the instrument. And by global, I mean, um, le well, let's take a look at, um, we have in here, in system settings, 
something called a stage setting filter. So I went to the system settings section on the left hand side of the product, went to general and then something called stage set filter. And here you'll find that most, most of these things are turned off. Um, the tempo changes, things like uh, system effects like chorus and delays. So if one of these things is turned on, so if I turn the chorus stage setting filter on, that means that um, the uh, chorus will actually never change um, as you switch stage settings. Okay, so whatever chorus depth you've set um, and all the parameters associated with that chorus uh, essentially become global. Uh, they'll, never, they'll never switch. Um, same with the delay um, stage setting filter or the reverb stage setting filter. Um, the EQ stage setting filter is off as well and that means you can, s you can dial in that, that master EQ for each of your stage settings and control it and preset it different ways for each of those stage settings. The compressor, however, is set um, by default to on. Um, so, um, you know, maybe you find yourself at a gig um, with a particular speaker system that just isn't handling the dynamic range. Uh, with this compressor um, filter set to on, you can, you can make an adjustment to the, to the master compressor and it will be global. However, I would not recommend um, that you would use that to change the level of each of your stage settings. So, um, because it changes the level of all of them. Um, so, if if you wanted to change, you know, maybe you 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 put four zones together, and this new stage setting you've created is is much louder than all of the others. Um, well, of course, you could go back and edit each of the individual zones and and turn down the levels of each of those zones. But um, one thing you do is you could go to your EQ and go down to the bottom and turn down your output level. And that's going to affect all four zones um, because all four zones go through the master EQ. So that's a great way to um, adjust uh, the output level of all of your stage settings so that when you switch from one to the other, they're more consistent in volume. So great question, Ustreamer in 1946-88. All right, so adjust those levels using um, the master EQ. Could I demonstrate drum set editing? Um, sure, absolutely. We'll take a, a quick look at that. And I'll just let you know, uh, we've been going for about an hour. Um, we're probably going to shut down maybe in the next 10 or 15 minutes and um, uh, you know, conclude this video, but we're going to do more of these. So uh, some great participation tonight. Uh, we'll continue to do as many of these videos as possible. So the question is about drum set, drum set editing. So, um, you know, the first thing to do is, is to select a drum sound. So just from the category, you know, I'm starting with a, a stage setting that has w one sound here, um, just a piano. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, a drum kit from from my tone category list and hit the edit button and then I'm going to choose edit tone and uh, this is where we get into the, the actual you know editing this drum kit and doing um, uh, some pretty serious edits so if I select from the screen instrument edit you'll see that as I play different keys on the keyboard um, that key then appears on my instrument list um, and then I can make changes um, to that particular instrument. So, you know, let's just change my kick drum here. So I have instrument select, I press C2, there's my kick drum. Um, so I can go through and choose any of the, the kick drums that are in the machine. Now I can continue to scroll down and we have some other things that we can edit. We can edit the pitch of the kick drum. Um, there's fine tuning as well. Um, we also have um, some amplitude, you know, some attack controls, which allow us to adjust a little bit of the uh, of the. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the. Um, it actually has a pitch envelope, so this is a cool thing. We can we can make a we can actually have the pitch of this change over time. So a lot of cool, you know, pitch editing, 
Um, if we go through, there's an amp section as well. Actually, I'm going to go to the filter section. Um, we can adjust the resonance of this kick. Um, and even put a filter envelope on it as well. So um, there's a lot of different ways to actually dramatically edit each of the um, drum sounds, customize them however you want using um, the filters, editing the pitch, I mean just a few simple changes. Strike another key, well, and now you're editing you're editing a different instrument. So it's pretty easy to you know make a change in pitch, uh, make a different instrument choice, um, and, 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 you know, and make it you know a drum kit that is your own um, that has a unique sound. Of course um, you store it you can give it its own name um, and uh, store it to USB drive. And actually, um, one thing I'd like to say is, uh, you know, we've got this forum over at Casio at CasioMusicForums.com. There's a great download section. Uh, you can actually uh, not only uh, for free download any of the stage settings and tones that are available there, uh, but what I would encourage you to do, if you know, if you're working on something for a gig. Um, and you come up with a, a setting for a particular song, uh, well, you know, share it with the group. Um, we've got a very active community at this point. Um, so go there, check out the, um, the stage settings and tones that are there. But if you make something cool, well, you know, contribute as well. I'd also encourage you, um, there's a rating system there. You can make comments on each of the sounds. And if you, uh, uh, you find something you like or whatnot, you can, um, again, you can upload your own, you can make comments, you can even rank your favorite ones. So uh, I do encourage you to participate. Again, that website is CasioMusicForums.com. So do check that out. Um, just quickly see if there's any other uh, last few questions. So in addition to CasioMusicForums.com, a uh, great place to, to learn about the instrument um, and participate. Um, and um, there's also a Facebook users group. I know many of the people currently watching the video live are from the Facebook users group. So if you if you search for Casio PX5S from Facebook, uh, there's a great group of uh, almost 200 people here already uh, from around the world uh, that have started to. Um, uh, you know, it's a great community where people are are sharing information, tips, and tricks about the instrument. Um, so one uh, more question here from Ustream: Is it possible to load new samples? Um, you know, with with the version 1.10 update, uh, one of the things we did was um, added. We did add new samples. Many of the um, the new synth waveforms are there. The uh, that we you know created some really cool sounds like this polysynth that I keep going back to. So um, so there's some great uh, new waveforms that were added. But um, uh, I, I can't, you know, I mentioned people were asking earlier, is there going to be another firmware update? Um, are there going to be new things added? Uh, I can't guarantee that at this time. I really don't know. Um, but we have added new samples already, so it is possible to do it. Um, the question is, you know, how much space um, is, uh, is available and how much... Um, you know how much more stuff can we fit in is you know just one of the considerations. So um, you know we'll we'll take we always take those things into consideration. Um, you know when looking at where to where to uh, um, take the PX5S next. So uh, but there's a lot of different sounds to download. Um, if you haven't heard them um, over at uh, CasioMusicForums.com, there's a uh, you know there's some some of the new one of my new favorites. And <laughs> You know, we've done some cool vintage organ sounds. This particular Vox Continental type of sound um, gives you a lot of control. Um, the fourth slider here. You know, we can do some cool, uh, cool doors covers and things like that with this great organ sound like that. Um, it does accurately represent the... Uh, the uh, draw bars as it would on an original Vox Continental. Um, there's additional, uh, you know, electric pianos that you can download. So 
So a lot of cool different presets. Uh, the Wurlitzer done by Mr. Jim Alfredson. So some a really cool uh, additional presets that continue to expand the capabilities of, of the product. So here's a, a, a grand piano sound with the reverb. So there's additional piano presets up there as well. Um, and uh, so do check those out. There are some uh, piano sounds that have different responses that play a little bit differently. Um, sometimes keyboard players are uh, frankly a little timid. So um, if you're not finding that the uh, um, piano sounds are are jiving with with the way you play, there's a couple different things that you can do. Um, first of all, you can go in and change. Oops. You can change the touch sensitivity of the product. Um, there's a, a lighter touch and there's a heavier touch. Um, so depending on, on the way you like to play. So as the name implies, light touch. Um, um, I don't have to play the keyboard very hard to get that, um, that highest velocity. Um, or if I put it on heavy touch, I really ne need to dig into the keyboard pretty hard to uh, to reach that high velocity. So do experiment with those. And if you're still not finding what you're looking for, um, do check out the other Grand Piano presets that we have on the forums. So there's some really, really cool sounds. So, um, all right, one last look at the Ustream list. I think uh, that's going to be it for today. Uh, I don't see too many more questions. So. Um, So again, I really appreciate uh, everyone's time here today. Um, this will be the first of many. We're going to do this more often, um, provide you guys um, the, the support and information that you need on the PX5S. So do um, stay tuned to um, Casio's Facebook page, which you'll find uh, at facebook.com slash um, Casio Music Gear. Um, there's also a, um, a Privia blog which is at uh, WordPress, so it's priviapro.wordpress.com where you'll find additional tutorials and, and information on the product. Uh, and of course, Casio's main site for information is um, Casio Music Gear. So uh, go to casiomusicgear.com and uh, you'll have the latest information on, on all of our products. So this was the first. Um, I appreciate the feedback and look forward to seeing everybody here on the next live Ustream event. Take care.